Today I'm going to be reviewing about macromolecule polymerization. And most of these reactions occur by dehydration reactions. In other words, when the two molecules link together, a water is lost. And so this occurs when the monomers basically have a hydroxyl group on one side, and then this combined with the uh, other monomer with the hydrogen on the other side, and you can see here that this is an H2O. And so when those two things combine, those two monomers combine to make a polymer, a water is lost, so that water molecule would have been in the middle there. So it's lost, and that is a dehydration reaction that links two monomers together for polymerization. So here we have an example where the dehydration reaction can link two sugars together. So I have sugar number one and sugar number two here, and you can see that we have the possibility of a dehydration reaction. Is that OH group from one monomer can bind to a hydrogen linked on the other one, and that will re release water, and that will then cause these to be linked together. And you can see that here, so this is the new linkage, and this bond right here is called the glycosidic bond. that links two sugars together, and it was formed by a dehydration reaction. When this happens repeatedly, we get a polysaccharide where we have multiple sugars linked together. And we can see that here as we have three, three sugars that we can see, and then this basically means you can link these sugars together as many times as you want to. And because these sugars have so many different OH groups, linked to them. They have many different possibilities for dehydration reactions, and so how those sugars are linked together gives you different sugar properties, polysaccharides, starch, glycogen, or cellulose, and this is an image straight from your book. We can also use the dehydration reaction to see how amino acids are linked together to make polypeptides or proteins. So we know that our amino acid has an amine group, has the central alpha carbon with its side chain bound to it, and that's the difference in the side chain is what makes all the different 20 amino acids that we know of. And if we put two of these amino acids next to each other, again, we can see that we have the possibility of a dehydration reaction. Right here, we have the possibility to release a water and create a new bond directly between that carbon and that nitrogen. And when that happens, that is a peptide bond that's created. So we now have a polypeptide. In this case, there's two amino acids linked together, but this again can be done in many lengths. Most proteins are hundreds of amino acids long. And this right here is our peptide bond created from the dehydration reaction linking two amino acids together. We will practice recognizing the different amino acid residues and the peptide bonds and the side chains in another video. But again, here you can see that a polypeptide results from the multiple dehydration reactions linking multiple amino acids together. And again, you can see here that we have the amine group the alpha carbon and the carbonyl, and then this would be the peptide bond linking the next one together, amine, alpha carbon, carbonyl, peptide bond, amine, alpha carbon, carbonyl, peptide bond, and so forth. And every one of these peptide bonds was created by a dehydration reaction that linked the amino acids together. Now, because dehydration can create polymers, hydrolysis reaction can actually break them apart. That means water can come in here and cause a reaction in here that can be catalyzed by enzymes, and that can actually cause these amino acids to break apart as well. And this is a big concept that we've been talking about, how the building blocks can be reused. So just like the bricks in a building can be put together to make a big structure that's useful, you can also break that down into individual bricks and build a whole new structure that's useful. In the same way, we can take these polymers, build them up to... Uh, molecules that are very useful biologically, but we can also break them down and use the amino acids or the sugar building blocks to make new proteins or polysaccharides that the cell needs. It depends on what the cell needs and at what time.